Hello and welcome to Doctor Story. Today's special guest is a renowned name in orthopedics. He is working as the senior orthopedic surgeon and sports injury specialist at Max Healthcare BLK and Max Panchil Park. Educated from prestigious Maulana Azad Medical College and pursued fellowship from Royal College of Surgeons of England. NHS in orthoscopy, sports injuries and joint replacement. Dr. Vinay Agarwal, MS and DNB Ortho. We will have the opportunity to discuss about our current lifestyle, fitness and exercise and then move on to gym and sports injuries and the advanced surgeries that are done today to treat such injuries. A warm welcome doctor, welcome to Dr. Story. Let me get started by stating that uh, today's lifestyle diseases are one of the main problems we face. So there are long hours at work, we eat junk, uh, eating junk has actually led to many new lifestyle diseases. So according to you, to what extent can exercise help us in this context? So Anshal, we have a concept of today of exercise medicine. So exercise medicine actually means exercise is medicine. So it's not just a uh, simple going to park and uh, you know uh, just stretching out. It's so uh, every exercise has a meaning now. So in my practice, what I follow and believe is that there are two kinds of prescription when a patient comes to me. One is a normal medical prescription that we advise for sir, you know medicines and surgery or whatever. And another aspect, an equally important or even more important aspect of my prescription is exercise prescription or an exercise medicine prescription. So majority of problems uh, of musculoskeletal uh, issues, back pain, joint pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, uh, by and large they are they can be managed by simple lifestyle modifications, especially for young professionals, middle aged professionals who are doing long sitting hours in computers and. Uh, also, people who are doing work from home in COVID time, we have seen there is a lot of work from home has been happening, and this has all you know kind of taken a toll on the, our health. My especially the musculoskeletal issues have been popping up. So our focus is mainly to educate and uh, avoid and uh, let the people know what mistakes they are doing. Follow good ergonomics and exercise is also very specific. It's just like every drug has an action. So there is a specific exercise for every issue. For example, someone coming to me for back pain will have a specific set of exercise prescription, which we call it uh, a gamut of exercise medicine, which includes strength and conditioning and, and all sorts of you know modalities which can be used. But it's an overall uh, analysis of the patient and then prescription. Oh, well, uh, as you said that there is, you know, very specific uh, exercises that you recommend. So many people have suffered injuries during exercise or just random workouts that they just enter into the gym and start. So what can be done to prevent these injuries and uh, what are all the things we should be careful about? So the majority injuries in sports either happen when you are in a professional sports, you know, people who are doing professional level sports like Olympic athletes and people who are, you know, following sports professionally. They are the reason injuries that the sports is high demand, like wrestling, judo, all these sports are very high demand and very injury prone. So that is a one aspect of injury which happens in sports. The other aspect of injury which happen in normal people, civilians and normal uh, non-athletic persons who go to gym for fitness or weekend warriors, if we call this term weekend warriors, who sometimes we feel like that we want to just be fit and one, one fine weekend we decide that we just want to do all the exercises. So this is a there are, this is a, this is a second category of people who we see in our especially city life where, where a lot of gyms have, have come up, a lot of fitness centers have come up and we just want to, you know, just uh, want to make use of them but we don't know how the right technique is. So the majority people, uh, so athletic injuries I would not discuss here because that is part of their sports and that is very sports specific and that is handled and you know when athletes come to us they are handled in a different way. But overall when we talk about a general population who get gym injuries, the majority people who do the mistakes are that they don't spend enough time on warm up. They just start lifting or sometimes they start, you know, they more focus on uh, building the, you know, that uh, weight lifting and uh, weight training is more take precedence over normal cardio warm up. So enough warm up is not done. Sometimes their techniques are faulty. Sometimes they overdo things or they, you know, when we exercise, there is lactic acid accumulation in the body. And we have to understand that we can't go beyond a certain level of activity here because lactic acid, even if we're trying our best and will, we have a strong willpower, but that lactic acid doesn't allow us to, you know, uh, exercise well. And that is the time when we get injured. So proper warm-up, lack, uh, proper technique, 
uh, very uh, proper target what you want to achieve whether you want to achieve weight loss whether you want to achieve uh, body toning whether you want to achieve body strengthening you know you want to have good uh, so that is targets have to be decided and that is what our role comes into guide people and that you got to want to achieve and what can be achieved at a certain level and certain age well thank you so much for that advice um and now that as we are aware of the possible injuries that you said let's talk about the surgeries that would be necessary if we could you know let's just start with sport surgeries that you just mentioned if it's to the shoulder what what are some advantages uh, you know to performing a minimally invasive surgery over a more conventional method so most of the sports injuries are we are doing nowadays operating on most of the people they are we are doing by minimally invasive techniques because they are we have a good quality arthroscope high definition cameras we have robotic surgeries we have precision guided uh, ultrasound or uh, you know cm guided uh, technology where we very precisely localize our area of interest so majority of surgeries are minimally invasive there is a very limited number of open surgeries nowadays and uh, discussing about injuries so shoulder if we talk about shoulder there are certain injuries like rotator cuff injuries uh, sometimes the shoulder cuff gets separated that's called bankard injuries so these injuries are very common in athletes and also people who have uh, you know uh, athletes or uh, sports persons who have uh, in, involved in sports like which involve a lot of throwing like javelin throw shot put throw and uh, sometimes wrestlers also get this injury sometimes uh, you know judo players get this injury like they get they get attacking so combat sports and sometimes even gym people they can be by lifting and uh, you know uh, or sometimes even play fighting people can get these injuries so we address them we investigate them uh, if they require surgery we operate on them uh, through arthroscopy and usually the outcome is uh, quite good we also received some inquiries related to knee surgery like about the a- acl so do all acl tears require surgery and when it is required what what type of surgery is it that is done to repair the acl also so that is a very good question actually acl is one of the most common uh, athletic injuries sports injuries and uh, very very common in sports persons as well as non sports persons it's a very commonly injured ligament uh female athletes are particularly more prone to acl injuries because females have a wider pelvis and a wider knee box so they get more prone to injury of acl so coming to your question of acl repair you see acl repair is has a very limited and a small role but it does have a role if patients come to us in a very early case sometimes people don't realize they have acl injuries they sometimes start doing their own hot fermentation and self medicating and then they don't get well and then they come back to us after many months sometimes people come to us after even even years even 5 5 6 6 10 10 years they later they come back so acl injury is often come missed sometimes if it is if patient comes to us early at a very early stage that is like within a few days or weeks yes acl repair can be attempted uh there are uh, studies which have come up which uh, suggest that acl repair has good outcomes but usually we have to do acl reconstruction so acl reconstruction means uh, that acl is not repairable and we take a ligament from the patient's own body usually it's a hamstring tendon and we fashion it into form of ligament and fix it inside the knee with under arthroscopic guidance it's a very uh, it's a very established and very settled procedure it's uh, recovery of sport recovery to sports and recovery to active life is very uh, you know comprehensive but yes there is a period of rehab uh, where the patient has to follow the our advice after surgery there are certain uh, knows and do's and don'ts which they have to follow for a few months and then they get back to active sport and have a good lifestyle so this is about you know the acl another another injury which happens in the knee is uh, middle collateral ligament or mcl and lcl injury the collateral ligaments so the again uh, every injury treatment depends on the timing and the patient's age group also if patient is in active sports then obviously the injury uh, you know the the surgery has to be is very essential is must sometimes patients are come to us in the higher age group like 45 40 50 plus for sedentary workers in those cases you might not even you know offer them the surgery so it depends on the patient's you know lifestyle their age their body habitus all the factors take into role when when we decide what to operate when to operate and when not to operate 
Well, thank you so much. I think we have cleared that doubt of all the people who asked. Okay, coming to uh, arthritis now. Do athletes have an increased risk of getting arthritis? And if so, what types of surgeries do you perform to increase mobility or you know elevate the pain caused by arthritis? So regarding your first question, yes. do uh, especially athletes who have been in demanding sports like uh, you know like long distance runners sprinters or uh, you know people who have a very uh, who have been engaged in some kind of very strong physical activities like trekkers mountain climbers and uh, also uh, people who have been lifting weights a lot you know like uh, weight lifters wrestlers yes they do have a increased risk of arthritis when they you know boxers also have been increased risk of arthritis especially when they use punching the arthritis is not just uh, knee arthritis it can happen any joint arthritis means inflammation of the joints it's a wear and tear of the joint so when any when any joint is overused overuse can be because of overweight can be because of overuse in terms of overuse of the you know particularly more usage of that joint like boxing you know you are overusing your wrist joint a lot so these people uh, do tend to have arthritis but it's not an incurable i would say it's not like one condition where you know you don't have a treatment for it there are various grades of arthritis various types of arthritis so whenever patient comes to us we first of all assess their sporting background we assess their how whether it's injury which has caused the arthritis or whether it is because of wear and tear and aging process and uh, you know long time overuse of particular joint and then treatment uh, you know revolves starts from simple medications to good amount of strength and conditioning and then uh, getting on to the invasive procedures sometimes even small injections can be given to uh, which are kind of anti aging uh, thing which uh, prolongs the life of the joint like uh, which called a platelet rich plasma and also in terms of surgeries when patient does need surgery there are now again newer technologies have come in we have the most modern uh, replacement uh, prosthesis whether it's knee replacement whether it's shoulder replacement even ankle replacement is now picking up so these are the uh, uh, prosthesis and these are the types of gadgets we have and all surgeries uh, but it's not uh, it's not like that every person is you know it's not like one shoe fits for all so every person is customized every person may not need surgery may need surgery depends on me and again like for example knee replacement so we have come off the time when there was only total knee replacement now we have half knee replacement we also have techniques called as high tibia osteotomy where we kind of shift the weight of the joint to other side and that increases life span of the joint without even replacing the joint so arthritis has uh, you know has kind of a lot of a gamut of uh, solutions which are offered based on the customization Okay, and doctor, can you just lastly enlighten us, enlighten us about ortho biologics? Like, what kind of injuries they uh, they are used to treat, and how they help to speed up the healing process? So, ortho biologics is a novel branch. So, we are moving. The world is moving towards nature again. We have done. We have seen that you know there are uh, all replacements and everything, whatever we do. But at the end of the day, again, you know, we. we whatever we can preserve is always better so ortho biology is aimed at preserving your cartilage preserving the uh, especially people in their 40s who are on the younger side who cannot you know who should not be going for knee uh, replacements as you know because they have on the younger side of age group but still they have arthritis so we do uh, techniques which aim at conserving the cartilage so this is called uh, one of the techniques is autologous chondrocyte implantation aci where we harvest the patient's cartilage uh, especially younger persons who have developed, developed arthritis we go culture them in the lab and then we reimplant the cells into their uh, cartilage defect other technology as i have already mentioned is a platelet rich plasma which again takes the blood from the patient is high high quality centrifuge machine is used to spin out that blood and take out that uh, the the stem the, the the rich plasma which is kind of uh, uh, elixir uh, kind of elixir which kind of uh, regrows the uh, things back into position so there are a, there is a upcoming and a promising role of these technologies of ortho biologics uh, it is free of side effects it is uh, one thing which uh, basically uh, conserves your cartilage conserves your natural joint conserves your natural uh, thing and also acts as anti aging thing so there are still studies going on and, and we uh, on our part we offer it to the patient whenever they there is a you know patient who needs it who and who is a likely candidate for it 
and also when uh, the outcomes are promising and we hope that this branch will go quite further in the right direction well that's so so astonishing that indeed it's been such an enriching discussion addressing uh, such a topic uh, thank you so much for joining and truly appreciate the time you took up today for all of us thank you